Years Later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on Black Christmas. It was released on December 25th, 2006. So, does it hold up? So I've never seen this movie or the original or the other remake. The only reason I even know about this franchise is because of the negative backlash of the most recent movie. I was like, wait, it's a remake of what? And then there's original 1974 film. And then there was also another remake, this one. And so I was like, okay, might as well talk about all three of them because this video is going to be released on Christmas Day. So Merry Christmas to you. This video is titled Black Christmas 2006, 15 years later. But despite that, I'll be talking about the original that came out in 1974 first. Black Christmas. So I've never seen this film before and one thing I will say right off the bat is that this movie is eerie as fuck. This movie has atmosphere to it that's creepy because of Billy. Just going around his house secretly, no one knows about him. Shots are mostly POV shot from his perspective, climbing in, getting through a window, and killing off these girls in the sorority house one by one without them knowing about it. And you don't really see his face at all, which is good because the only part that you see about him is his eyeballs looking through the holes and whatnot. Aside from that, he is completely a figure in the shadow, in the darkness, well mainly, you know, the attic which no one checks but either way it adds an airy feeling to the movie because you don't know what this guy looks like and you probably don't need to because by the end of the film you don't really see his face he actually gets away with it billy as a character feels like a boogeyman he feels like a myth despite being a man himself who's just mentally not right in the head this movie makes him out to be like the boogeyman in the closet kind of like michael myers where you don't really know this guy and you don't really need to because that's the whole mystery to it the creepy factor about it it's gonna stay that way which is good and then those phone calls creepy as fuck anytime he's like saying all these weird things things moaning and whatnot telling all of these girls how they're gonna die by him and whatnot now one thing i do want to question about is how he got the phone i grew up after kind of before home phones were dying i remember my family having a home phone it was this black home phone with like silver buttons and whatnot but i only remember seeing that for like two years out of my like childhood life honestly and then the iphone came out 08 09 maybe 2010 and then i just completely forgot about home phones. so maybe i don't know how home phone works maybe there's like two set of home phones but how did billy ever get a phone is really questionable Flip phones even a thing? No, hold on. Flip phones were a late 90s thing, right? Either way, really the only question I have, how you got a phone? Aside from that, calls are really creepy. And each call gets more and more of the character stressed out, mainly Olivia Hussey's character. Another handful of girls are worried about this caller and how he might be out to get them. And I don't know any of these characters. Like, the only characters or actors that I recognize is Olivia Hussey and Lois Lane from the Superman Reeves movies. And that's all I know. So, any other character, like the mom that drinks, I don't know her name, but I just know that she has a drinking problem. There's other girls that get killed. Don't know their name except for Claire because her father's looking for her. Aside from that, don't know any other actual names because I forgot it's still a slasher. So each of these girls they have to die one by one. The most effective kill because you see the aftermath of it. Billy chokes out this girl in this like plastic bag and then you see her rocking on that chair. Airy and creepy image. You got, I think, the older lady that drinks, I think. She gets stabbed through like her head by Billy, but we don't see that. It's not even really that gory. I think it gets gory by the end, but it's not really that gory, which isn't an issue at all. It is still a slasher by the end of the day but the film was so effective in building this behind the scenes and having billy be in the shadows that i really don't care or mind for you know the gore of it in this film and so because the father thinks claire is missing it turns into this mystery and finding all of these girls and there's a red herring the boyfriend of olivia hussey he is the red herring even till the end they think that he did all the killings because he comes in at the wrong time but at the right time to get caught and be a suspect and then more on the phone calls they will not trace this line to the phone call and so near the end of the film we find out that the call is coming for what then the house itself which is this what the fuck moment of like oh shit okay olivia hussey should probably get out and then the boyfriend comes in as a red herring he gets killed but even by the end i love this very bleak and kind of dark end where billy doesn't get caught he's still up in the attic still on the phone calling and then the movie ends with the sound of the phone ringing in the end evil wins like the bad person won everyone thinks they survive or whatnot they left olivia hussey in the room alone there's that one cop guy standing outside whenever the credits roll but he ain't gonna do shit but i love how bad wins evil wins by the end billy doesn't get caught and honestly i'm more shocked that there wasn't a sequel to this there's two remakes of it but an actual sequel back in the 70s 80s or even 90s i would have seen this as kind of a big franchise back in the day but apparently not because i guess this film went under the radar and now someone like me knows about it now because i've never heard of it so that's more shocking that they end off this film without having its sequel and then having it ruined and whatnot like that was such a i'm assuming a big thing back in the day right friday 13 freddy cougar halloween most of the time they really 
really good first one-off film and then studios are like hey let's just milk this franchise i'm shocked that this wasn't a franchise wasn't milked to death and wasn't popping up like a movie every year so in the end black christmas 1984 original is a pretty damn good film it's a slasher i guess you know it doesn't i guess it is but that's not really needed because billy is so effective being in the shadows killing off these girls one by one with those creepy ass phone calls was really effective and more people should watch it again this is my first time watching it never heard of it so if i've never heard of it then i'm just gonna assume that no one's really heard of it aside from the internet maybe there's already this cult following behind it that i don't know about but this movie should get recognized at least to the level of i don't know friday the 13th because this movie is better than friday the 13th it doesn't feel padded out by extending dialogue or useless shots this movie's pretty damn good and effective in using billy black christmas then came the first remake in 2006 what the actual video is about or i guess the title of the video so i know a lot more actors that i recognize katie cassidy supernatural arrow dawn from buffy which i'm currently watching right now because i plan to do something with that later on but dawn from buffy don't know the actor's name and then mary elizabeth winstead winstead something like that she's in it as well and then those are the only three girls i know based off of the original i know a lot more faces and actors in here and luckily as a remake it is different it still has the same aesthetics of a black christmas movie which by the way the lights and the hallways and everything this movie looks good in those lights but also begs the question who the hell was set up all those lights i get outside because it looks pretty but on the inside it seems like a nightmare to take down after christmas i think the changes made for the remake really it's like a 50 50 it can work but for me i don't know it's okay they give backstory on billy which i don't think is needed they go in a weird incest route and there's a second killer now it's like okay it's different for sure i'm glad this isn't a shot for shot remake which i hate if you're gonna do a remake make it different and while this is different i don't think it's quite as effective as it should be so how are there two killers well there's this person named agnes and so who is agnes this film takes us time to tell you who billy is and how he grew up so it goes all the way back in 1970 where he's born but then fast forward to 1975 you find out his parents are having an issue with each other the mom specifically is a horrible person because she gets with another guy but then they kill her current husband which makes billy go out and see that he's been killed overhead plastic which inspires him to be a great human being in the future and then he gets caught looking on them digging up under like the house burying the body and then they lock him up in the attic for a long ass time up until like in his teenage years young adult life and so fast forward to 1982 and incest occurs where the new husband boyfriend or whatever they're doing their thing but then he falls asleep so she has an idea she has a bright idea to go up in the attic drop down her clothes and forcefully to get her own son to impregnate her so that she can have a kid i was like okay you know this is different but yeah i don't really want to see this or watch this nine months months later the baby is born her name is agnes and then the final year is 1991 where everything happens agnes is like five years old now billy's making threats to his mom and i guess his new stepfather and saying that agnes is finally his she's mine now she's my family something like that and so billy's able to kill his mother her father protect agnes he considers her family he decides to like make skin cookies he carves out his own mother's skin bake it and eat it while cops come in and they take him arrest him take him to like a prison or whatever and so this is spread throughout the film and being told by different characters because billy is known as a myth which i do like he's like this boogeyman story that's being told throughout the neighborhood and while i like that this whole thing is just i don't know a bit much and also eyeballs the eyeballs in this film is like a big 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 thing i don't know why they made it so big i mean i guess looking through the eye holes made sense with his eyes but they love to eat in this film this whole thing it's a bit excessive but it's not awful unless you don't like this type of shit which i don't but like it's like, okay whatever it's something new different giving backstory to billy is a mistake to me but this film does have the best kills in the entire series and franchise icicle kill where that one lady she just kind of backs off and then just comes down and hits her the way that dawn dies dawn from buffy dies is that agonist throws like these ice kits at her back and it shows the aftermath and then the final kill billy himself falling from the second or third floor right in the middle of the tree in the hospital that was really cool as well the only three kills that were notable and the best it doesn't have that airiness because you're being told what billy is and how he grew up and they went a nurture route with him more like oh i guess we know about him now and he's gonna come home on a christmas day and reunite with agnes they still have homages to the original like the house the lights and everything the christmas aesthetic and the pov shot which i think only happens like two times that's really it but you know i appreciate the effort i guess the girls themselves i don't know maybe just me but they make them a bit more i guess mean most of them they hate christmas there's that one girl drinking to go to sleep near the end of the film dawn seems to not like it there's this one other girl that doesn't like christmas and it seems like katie cassidy and maybe mary elizabeth don't mind being here every other girl they're 
kind of like, ugh, I don't want to be here. That type of attitude and just kind of demeanor about them. And the first one, they were just there. Lois Lane in the first one, she was nice, kind of playing around. This one, they just seem a bit more mean. And then Billy gets out. He gets out by tricking a guard and stabbing his eyeball, kills Santa Claus man in prison, which, why is he in prison? That's one thing too. Why is Santa Claus in prison? Is he like a guard, but guess what? It's Christmas day and he wants to dress up as Santa Claus? Is that what it is? Because I have no idea. He gets home. There's a fire. Katie Cassidy burns Agnes to death, which I think would be the end of the film. Maybe Billy survives. Maybe that's a cliffhanger, but nope. Going to the hospital. Billy kills one other girl back in bed, gets out, and then pushes Billy over the edge to end off the film. A good death is a cool way to end this movie, but the movie itself, a lot of weird decisions. The movie is okay. The whole incest stuff, don't really want to see that. But I think the biggest issue is giving Billy a backstory because that's not really needed. It's the same way that giving a backstory to Chucky or Michael Myers. I don't really care about the backstory of Michael Myers, nor Chucky, even though we know a lot about Charles Lee Ray and Dolph voodoo stuff for billy specifically it's in that same vein of i don't really want to know about billy just have him be in the shadows be creepy give him creepy phone calls i feel like not enough but they do happen and that's it but this movie decided to be like you know what let's have the sorority house girls kind of the same but backstory for billy which is a mistake so yeah in the end 15 years later black christmas 2006 doesn't hold up i guess it doesn't it's okay what i recommend it to you no not really just watch the original version but if you're someone that likes watching franchises then sure it's all right and then the second remake, and I guess attempt, came out in 2019. The only reason I even know this film is because of the big negative backlash. I wasn't gonna watch it, but then I heard everyone talking about how bad it was. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna watch it. Watching it now, um, yeah, you know, you could see why. This movie, it's not even a movie, it's a message over a film. And so if you want a message in your film, you could do that creatively. There's a bunch of movies and TV shows that have a message behind it, but can tell a great story, put your message creatively throughout. And this movie doesn't do that. It's not good at all. Same that all men suck that concept men suck could have been a fun concept be a fun slasher and this movie does not succeed in that whatsoever it puts a message over it which creates bad dialogue the whole all men suck this movie seemingly doesn't have a gray area maybe the two boys one of the girls boyfriends and the kid that tries to get with our main girl riley are examples of good men or good boys but aside from that it's really black and white and i don't know why that is nothing's ever really black and white there's no gray area the movie doesn't dive into that and this movie has nothing to do with black christmas it is only associated by name the only thing about it is this already house full of girls and the phone call which only happens one time but that's like a fake out or like a prank so aside from that this isn't really black christmas but i guess it is because by name it is it could have gone with that whole riley being sexually assaulted by her old boyfriend have a story with that instead of you know having a message and hammering down you could have used riley's character could have used that as a narrative but it only gets brought up like two or three times i actually wouldn't have mind that i guess if there's one thing that i didn't expect it's the whole twist of there's actually some whole supernatural stuff going on and it turns out that some of these boys, they don't want to do this. By the end, when they burn a house down and everything, they're killing innocent people. They don't really want to be a part of this cult. They were forced to. The bad teacher or whatnot, sure, kill him. But like, there's innocent people in there and you just kill them as well. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this film. I don't remember like the Riley girl. There's the other chick that's really hard set on all men sucking. There's the girl with the boyfriend with a bad dialogue, really bad dialogue. There's no gore, like PG-13 slasher. It should have been rated R. The only thing that would have like helped this movie are the kills. But instead, anytime there's a kill, they cut away from it so yeah clearly this movie black christmas 2019 the second remake is a messy and bad film it is an example of how not to make a film putting a message over a film and if you want to have a message in your film do it in a creative way so yeah, that was it for the Black Christmas series. If I were to rank these, it's pretty easy. Dead Last is the 2019 remake, and then second is the 2006 remake, and then the best one is clearly the original because it has that creepy factor to it, Billy hiding in the shadows. That's all you need. It's what makes it effective, and for some reason, these two remakes couldn't do that. Don't know why, but again, I'm still shocked it didn't become bigger than it actually is after the first one that came out back in 74. Why wasn't studios or anyone pumping out a movie? The first remake, different direction, which is fine, and then the second remake isn't even a film more of a message so it's really interesting just seeing three movies that are somewhat of the same by name and then seeing three different versions of it was really interesting so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching